Oh gosh. Blue eyeshadow was a choice. <laughs> 2024 can you believe it it seems like it was only yesterday that our lives were upturned by the pandemic and now here we are welcoming another year hopefully carrying the same things and nuances that comforted us during lockdown in my case it was a mix of korean pop music mixed with american folklore and the occasional taylor swift song on repeat me hi i'm the problem it's me and books of course which obviously motivated me to start uploading even more videos to this channel and it's safe to say that i am even more excited to upload more book reviews next year i've seen a couple of booktubers say that the mere act or the mere presence <laughs> of being on booktube really takes the joy out of reading and i totally see the point of view of bigger channels most especially or people that rely on YouTube as a main source of income or have to sacrifice an honest review in exchange of a big fat paycheck from a publishing company. That is definitely not the case for me, at least. And I truly hope I never have to resort to that. At 150 subs, 10 of which are probably my family's account, I don't really worry about that like for now. All I'm focused on as a booktuber is to put out quality videos and to make your visit to my channel worthwhile. That said, in 2024, I hope to continue reviewing books that I like, I didn't like, and the ones that have pleasantly surprised me. So if you are watching this video, and especially if you have subbed to me, thank you so much. It really does mean a lot. Overall, I really did have a good year. Struggled in private at times, but who didn't? But you know, all that really matters to me is that I pick myself up because no one can comfort you better than, well, yourself. Okay, back to books. I read a couple of good books this year. I set a reading goal of 24 books on my Goodreads account, which by booktube standards, that's an equivalent to a disgrace. There were books that stayed with me, books I reread and I found the magic in them again, and books which weren't exactly my cup of tea. Probably the best new books that I read this year, and by new, I mean like they're new to me because it's my first time reading them, were these books. Of all the books I'm about to mention, I think Our Wives Under the Sea really left the most profound effect on me. I really loved exploring the concepts of love and grief and loss under the backdrop of cosmic horror. The characters of Miri and Leia really stayed with me because I felt like their emotions were beautifully explored along with their relationships. Between the two, I really felt more for Miri. Her loneliness and realization that the life she and Leia shared was never truly going to be the same again was a beautiful allegory of relationships that are slowly coming to an end or even something more dire like slowly losing a loved one. To a terminal illness. The next book that I was so pleasantly surprised that I ended up really loving was The Dressmaker of Paris by Georgia Kaufman. It did remind me a lot of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, although it is not as profound or as deep as that book or it wasn't as well written as Our Wives Under the Sea or the Evelyn Hugo book. I thought it greatly like explored the concept of resilience very well and there was a very beautiful lesson about how the toughest decisions it, that we make in our lives often leads us to the right path. And I mean that in a way like in Rose's case, our main character for example, she makes a lot of decisions that doesn't seem right at that time but she decides to take the risk anyway and it works out in the end for everyone involved and i really love that because more often than not we see writers write about like women's stories and these women characters or female characters always make sacrifices expected of them if you get what i mean like marrying for the sake of your kids or giving up your dreams or your dream career for the sake of love rosa she never made any of those conventional choices instead she forged her own path overall i thought it was such a good book and it was such a good surprise, especially coming from a first time author. Finally, we have Love in the Big City by Sang Young Park. It is such a simple book about a gay man living in Korea with such a simple prose translated by my favorite translator, Anton Her. I think I really like this book because I bought it after my trip to Seoul. I mean, 
I actually bought it in Korea and read the whole book after my trip to Seoul during the summer and I, I really love it. It's really nothing special, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's a simple, maybe autobiographical book about somebody who just wants to love, be loved, and be accepted basically. I think what I really liked about this book is that it felt so, it felt like a visceral experience. I felt like I was actually there and talking to the MC as he narrated his life. I love the depictions of Seoul and how our MC really just navigated through life, through their college years, their mandatory military enlistment, and of course the experience of trying to find a relationship that lasts. And I really like that none of the relationships are really romanticized. Like, if it's a one-night stand, it's a one-night stand. If it's a guy who's so physically attractive and you're so like attracted to them, they tick all your boxes for your ideal type, they still end up being a jerk because that's life. People aren't perfect and relationships tend to be disappointing. It really felt like such an intimate look into a friend's life. That's how I can, you know, describe this book essentially. I feel like it was written by a friend and we were eating Korean barbecue and it was narrated to me in Hongdae <laughs> with a glass of soju between us. And this book is a perfect example that a book can be so simple and it doesn't really need to be overwritten for it to be memorable. Okay, now I have read some books that are not so good too. And before you subscribers say that, oh, she's gonna say Riley Sager, it's not. I think I was most disappointed by the Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I don't think that I have ever been this excited and this so quickly let down by a book in my life. Now, I won't go into detail on what I didn't like or what disappointed me the most about this book because I already, already did a video about that. Bumblebee. It was Bumblebee. He ruined the book for me. I mean, I was just so ready to like this book, which is rule number one, before approaching a book, you gotta be neutral about it. But anyway, the point is I did not like it at all. In fact, I would reward this book as the most disappointing read that I've ever come across all year. At close second, we have The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager and the Emily Oliphant book. Emily Oliphant is completely fine, something like that. It was, they were both very disappointing. Okay, I couldn't resist. Just let me talk about why I didn't like Encyclopedia of Fairies because I know that it is an extremely popular book. The book was marketed as a cozy book, but it wasn't anything like that. I was stressed because it was overwritten. There was a promise that there was gonna be academic rivals, but of course, they jumped straight to the romance, and I don't think that there was a proper plot in this book at all. I think the book author is sending me like bad juju right now because like the sun is directly on my face. So back to it being a cozy book. If cozy books are meant to be this boring, like the Yeonamdong bookshop by the way, then I don't think I wanna read another cozy book at all. I think I kind of half expected cozy books to be like Animal Crossing, or Sarju Valley on pages. <laughs> totally did not make, meet my expectations. And of course, if you like the book, that's great. This is just my opinion. I just didn't like it at all. Next. So as I said, I am definitely looking forward to reading more next year. So as a bonus, I just want to share some things or some books that I have on my horizon. I'm actually reading Death Valley by Melissa Broder right now. And I also have The Racial Incident on my list. I don't have a physical copy of the book just yet, but I will be making an order soon. I also want to read Winter in Sokcho, The Heaven and Earth Gro Grocery Store, and Samantha Shannon's The Bone Season. I really do like the Priory Season series and I'd love to read another fantasy series from her. And can you believe I have never read a Lisa Jewell book in my life and it's about damn time I did. I also want to give like chances to writers that I didn't really like this year. I have been recommended Home Before Dark by Riley Sager and of course there is the new Christopher Golden book that is coming next year. So in one of my past videos I did do a review of Road of Bones by Christopher Golden. I liked it a bit, but the story kind of fell short of my expectations, but I am more than willing to give Christopher Golden another shot. I heard his new book is absolutely fire. Another author I'd love to give another shot is Coco Mellers. I didn't really like 
Cleopatra and Frankenstein because of Frank and the whole cheating issue. But she has a new book, presumably coming out next year, and I'd love to check that out. And I want to read another book by Catrio Noir. I didn't like The Last House on Needless Street. It's not my favorite, but it was well written. I just felt like there are too many layers to it, but I want to try to read like Looking Glass Town, which is another from Catriona Ward, because I have been so curious about that book. And more Stephen King next year, please! <laughs> Stephen King has a new book, and I think you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's a collection of stories and it's coming out also next year. And there is also this book called The Book of Love, which Samantha Shannon actually posted on her page. And I will be adding that to my TBR list. Sorry, I forgot who the author was, but you know, I want to read it. I heard it's going to be adapted to a movie, which is kind of interesting. And let's not forget my new favorite author, mystery author, uh, Stacey Willingham. She's coming up with a new book next year, so I'm really looking forward to that. I definitely want to read more books by Asian authors as well, and maybe nonfiction. I have a lot on my list. And hopefully I get to read them all. So yes, that's my 2024 plan. I can't wait to take you on this reading journey with me. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in 2024. Bye!